I would like to introduce our presenters. Um, this is again, the value of collaboration between instructors and learning technology coaches, learning from and with each other. And we have, as you can see, a wonderful array of coaches, designers, and students that are here to, uh, to teach us and, and, and give us insight on their experiences. So without further ado, I shall pass it over to you. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. I guess I'll just start and then hand it over to our coaches and instructors who have worked with the learning technology coaches uh, recently. Uh, so the unexpected shift due to COVID, the unexpected shift to uh, hybrid online remote teaching has created the need for very intensive use of technology, existing technology, as well as search for new technology in order to improve, enhance student learning experiences and teaching experiences as well in uh, the context that are rapidly changing and evolving all the time. So in such circumstances, collaboration between instructors, faculty members, instructors, and CIDL staff members who provide support uh, in order to share experiences, in order to learn from each other, uh, this kind of collaboration has become a necessity. And one very successful example of such collaboration is collaboration between instructors and learning technology coaches. So in this series of uh, mini talks, mini presentations, learning technology coaches and instructors will discuss mutual benefits of uh, such collaboration and also demonstrate a few examples of their work, uh, including the use of Brightspace assessment tools, uh, rubrics, as well as utilizing uh, Power Tool, which is a screencasting tool, fabulous screencasting tool, and H5P to create interactive uh, teaching materials. So uh, now I would like to hand it over to the uh, first presenter. And Javad, can you move, can you switch to the next slide, please? Thank you, and that is going to be assessments in Brightspace and Tim Lehan and Jennifer, it, it's yours now. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tim Lehan Yogotiaki, and with uh, Dr. Jennifer Windsor today, we'll be presenting um, our collaborative work using assessment tools in Brightspace. So, uh, next slide, please. So I will start off by giving an outline of what we want to do today. And um, the first thing would be introduction of the speakers. Um, we will both do our uh, individual intro introductions. And uh, the second thing is to give like a general overview, which I will take care of. I'll give an overview of what we'll be talking about. And then Jennifer will take on the instructor's perspectives where she will be talking about um, what she had in mind, what she, you know, experienced with learning technology coaches. And that takes us to the next um, uh, item, which is going to be um, the collaboration between learning technology coaches and instructors. She will also talk about the benefits she had uh, gotten from this collaboration. And lastly, I will talk about my own uh, benefits as well. So next slide. Um, Jennifer, it's up to you. Thank you, <clears throat> Jamie Lane. For um, I'm just doing a very brief introduction uh, on me. I'm Dr. Jennifer Windsor. I started as an innocent student of international business and management, moved on to become a graduate teaching assistant to fund my PhD, which I finished successfully in 2016. And uh, since then, I'm working as a adjunct teaching professor in finance and entrepreneurship at a university in uh, Germany and as well I've taken on some session of teaching since 2021 due to my very prestigious marriage to Dr. Blair Windsor <laughs> and um, <clears throat> next um, that's all on me and I'll pass over to Timmy Lane who will also say a few things about him. Thank you Jennifer. So I'm Timmy Lane like I mentioned I'm an environmental science doctoral student at MON and uh, prior to my studies at MON I have I've done my MS in uh, land and water systems at the University of British Columbia um, uh, in 2020 and just before then also I did my bachelor's in applied geology uh, in Nigeria. Um, I'll just go straight into the next item. Okay. 
Right. So you'll be wondering what assessment really means when we are talking about um, uh, this tool in Brightspace. So if you have like a cost site on Brightspace, this is what the assessment uh, tool looks like. It's one of the major tools on the uh, very first page of your website. And then clicking on it, you would see the drop down list um, that I have over there showing assignment grades quizzes rubrics self assessment and surveys uh anyways um jennifer is going to be talking more about um the exact thing we did with assessment and then i'll just give it to her to start <laughs> thanks again tim elaine this is what it looks like in uh, bright space and uh, thank you Javad, for handling the presentation so when I started um, preparing for my teaching in December 2020, I had one month to basically prepare a course more or less from scratch. So I was really focused on producing content. And I soon realized I'd never used Brightspace that this well, system has endless possibilities, which however come with increased complexities. And since I was strapped for time, I thought to myself, is there a better way instead of going through multiple videos to find out how I can do what I want to do. And there came in the offer for learning technology coaches. And I signed up for this right away. And I was, uh, I'm on my second coach. Timmy Lane is my second coach. I had uh, Sarah Denise last year. And I came with the need for help uh, with setting up uh, assessment tools. And if Javad will go to the next page, I tell you what I actually wanted. So we were all in online teaching and online really meets totally asynchronous. So I wanted uh, also my assessments to be asynchronous and a bit automatic. So I wanted to set up quizzes based on an extensive question library um, that would help me generate multiple versions of one quiz. And I wanted to give students, for example, the possibility to take three quizzes, but only have the best two graded. And I did the same with uh, mini assignments that students had to hand in. And I needed help to set this up in a way that this works. And this is where um, Tim Lane and Sarah came in because I wanted this to be automatically transferred for the grading. And when I first started with Sarah and with Tim Lane again, um, they said, do you want me to, to do this for you? And do you want to look? But I said, please rather tell me what to do and I do it myself. And that is what they basically did. So they basically instructed me step by step on how to do it in the system. And the great thing is, or for me, was that during the term, I learned how to do it myself in the sense that at the end of the term or midterm, for this year, Tim, Timmy Lane, it was a bit earlier, I was able to do it by myself and I had just my coach check. For example, I had them check on the day of the quiz if I had set everything correctly that it would run automatically and there, that there wouldn't be any troubles. And so that was a really great experience for me. And if I have to summarize the benefits of that really great scheme of learning technology coaches, um, that would be on the next slide, I can say most benefits for me are basically in the sense that it, it saved me time. Yeah, that's it. Te learning technology coaches saved you time because it enables you to help you with the very specific things that I needed. I didn't need everything, but I did help with specific tools. And working with my coaches also helped me to understand a bit better the logic of Brightspace as a system. So now I can tell students if they tell me this didn't work on Brightspace, I have a feeling or I have an inkling why this didn't work. And last but not least, I get my job done and I can make sure it's done and set up correctly and I don't have to worry about anything going wrong. So at the end of the day, I love my learning technology coaches and I've said to my university who's um, setting up a new system that they definitely have to get learning technology coaches. And that's over to Timmy Lane. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jennifer. That's really <laughs> inspirational for me. Um, I'll just quickly run through what I benefited from 
collaborating with uh, Jennifer so far. The very first thing, and that's actually very important to me, is the communication skills. You can you can actually see obviously how um, how synergizing this um, uh, our presentation has been. You know, going from one slide to the other, and then this just shows you. It's just like exhibiting how far we've come and how how well she has um, this collaboration has helped me in terms of communication. And uh, secondly, I I would say that I have passively learned you know some pedagogical skills from collaborating with um, with with Jennifer because sometimes you know you see from instructors' direct perspective. You see directly from their perspective, their passion, you know, their motivation, their interest in getting things done for their students and making learning, you know, easier for them. So I, I would say I've learned this. Also, you know, she, our very first point when she was mentioning the benefits she got from this collaboration was, you know, saving time and that has to do with you know time management from my hand as well so i would say this collaboration has helped me in that aspect finally getting the job done requires you know a lot of planning execution and all that so i would definitely say project management skills are one of those things that i have learned so um on a final note, I would just say that it has been a really fulfilling experience for me. And I believe that as much as Jennifer is fulfilled that she's getting the job done for our students, I'm really fulfilled as well that she's really happy working with us. And this will take us, this will be the end of this uh, presentation. And I would just want to appreciate Jennifer for coming on board. And then I'll pass it on to um, Sepide, who is the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Tim Lane, for inviting me. Um, and thank you, everyone for giving me this opportunity. Um, I might leave earlier because I'm on, on playground duty with my son soon, so if, excuse me if I leave earlier. Thank you. Um, can you hear, my, hear me vividly? Great, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sefi Dari Mohammadi and I'm a PhD student at Process Engineering Department, Hibernia EOR Research Group. Assurance of Learning, or known as AOL, using competency or rubrics in Brightspace. In this presentation, I will be introducing Assurance of Learning and how working on this project with Faculty of Business Administration was beneficial for both parties. Let's start with the objective of this presentation, how to perform assurance of learning in Brightspace. Generally speaking, there might be different strategies to perform AOL. However, the goal is of this presentation is to find and introduce an applicable solution to perform AOL considering the criteria asked from the assessor and the department and also the features that are available in one brighter space learning management system. Next slide, please. Thank you. Assurance of learning is the systematic processes of determining and revising degree program learning goals, designing, delivering, and improving degree program curricula to achieve learning goals and demonstrating that degree program learning goals have been met. AOL process consists of some steps that is shown some of them in the image in the slide. First, review mission, vision, and the values that we are looking for. Second, identify courses most closely aligned with learning goals. Third, determine what measures and ins instruments to assess learning. Four, assessment cycle, plan, and schedule, which is the example in the slide, which is shown in assessment cycle. Collect, analyze, and disseminate assessment data. Six, resolve to implement continuous improvement actions. Seven, evaluate impact. A, continue to in innovate, and the last step, document all the AOL findings, analyze, and recommendation. To do so, at the Business um, Administration Department at Memorial University, the following criteria expected to be met. 
first, multiple assessments should be associated with one activity. In addition to the normal assessment of an activity, um, can you please uh, go to the previous slide? Thank you. Multiple assessment should be associated with one activity. In addition to the normal assessment of activity, which is the normal with any courses that is set in the bright space, AOL needs to be associated with activity as well. The AOL assessment should be hidden from the instructor and the students, only available for the reviewers to avoid confusion for the learners and instructors. A student identity should be hidden during the assessment, which, so it would be an unbiased assessment. The summary of the assessment should be available to provide the report of the assessment. The AOL results should not be connected to the gradebook to not interfere with the instructor assessment strategy of the course. And the last criteria that the department looking for was the assessment should be associated with a specific assessment piece that is the target of the AOL. Therefore, the other objects or activities of the course would not be assessed by the assessment. Next slide, please. Competencies versus rubrics for the AOL purpose. Competencies can help track information about the knowledge, skill, and ability learners acquire as they participate in course or other learning experiences. A competency structure is the hierarchy composed of uh, three basic elements, competencies, learning objectives, and activities. A learner can achieve learning objectives and competencies by achieving accessible activities. Although you can create multiple activities, learning objectives or competencies or all same on their same category of the competency, but at least we need one competency, one learning objectives and one activity to be connected to be able to make the hierarchy of the tool. Rubric is an efficient and effective way to evaluate learners in a course. It provides a consistent experience to evaluate the learners and, the from, and from the AOL standpoint, helps set expectation and criteria, as well as provide data summary to be analyzed in the AOL test. It can be associated with an activity and provide information to perform provide information of the performance of the learners in a systematic way. Next slide, please. Let's talk about key mutual learning values. Working on this project, the instructor and I shared the knowledge about AOL and how to conduct it in Brightspace. Benefits from the instructor point of view are Knowing about the tools that can be used to perform AOL, including brightest, um, competencies and rubrics in the bright space. The best tool for the AOL, which in this case, that with the Faculty of Business Administration, was rubrics due to the criteria the department looking for and also the limitation of the LMS or learning management system, which was bright space. And the last, how to use the tool for the AOL purpose, which includes a step-by-step -step handout specifically designed to perform AOL using rubrics in Brightspace. From the LTC point of view, or from my point of view, something that I learned from the, of working in this project was knowing about AOL and its criteria, the basics of the AOL and the common criteria to perform an AOL. Tools to conduct assurance of learning, using the information received from the department, and also the internet search. We looked for different tools that could be used for this purpose. Rubrics and competency tool for the AOL purpose. Conducting a critical review to figure out these tools for the 
purpose we were looking for and how to perform AOL in bright space using rubrics, considering the criteria, collect data, and finally extract a summary to, re to be reported in the improvement actions. Thank you, and this was my section, and I'm gonna hand over to the next person talking about H5P. Uh, thank you, Sepida. Uh, so in this part, I'm gonna talk about H5P objects in Brightspace, and uh, Professor Larry Ellen Hogan uh, is gonna help me as an instructor for this part. So following what Marina said, developing a coaching cycle for working with props is vital to the success of our program in CITL, specifically as LTCs. And within that cycle, there should be a good amount of preparation and planning before a tech tool ever gets introduced to props, in which in this case, that's H5P. The hope is that, you know, we as tech coaches, we train and mentor instructors how to leverage technologies for learning. Um, H5P is a short form of HTML5 package. It's a tool that enables instructors to produce and run interactive content and objects, as you can see a couple of those in the right side. Um, so, uh, and those objects are within LMS or other kinds of e-learning browser or website. And it has some features, like it's a tool for gamify gamifying learning. Game gamification is applying game design features and game characteristics to generate positive outcomes in a non-environment, non-game environment. And it has some elements like timer, countdown, personalization, micro interactions, and all the other ones that a short list of those ones are listed in the right side. And it has some features, some benefits for both learners and uh, users, which in this case are students, such as enables multiple channels of communication, increases the engagement of learners and so on. And I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Professor Logan to talk about, um, oh, we had a workshop about H5P like two years ago, and we introduced H5P to instructors and how they can use H5P as part of their course to make their course in, uh, more interactive for students. And in this part, uh, uh, Professor Hogan is gonna talk about uh, her point of view about using H5P in her course. Hi folks, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Um, actually, I was just recalling, uh, Javid, the timing of that particular workshop was March 2021, I believe, which was at the beginning of this whole shift to online learning. Um, and what an incredible tool H5P was to engage your students at that time. Um, I didn't get to participate a whole lot in the workshop, but it sort of kickstarted my knowledge on uh, what H5P was, and more importantly, knowing that it was a tool available to us and we had coaches such as yourself to interact with when we needed to. Um, so the course, uh, I'm a full-time lab instructor for first year engineering students um, and a per course instructor in the summer as well. Um, so with the shift to complete online learning, I was really looking for some way to sort of engage with the students who may be in different time zones um, in a particularly challenging subject for many of them. Okay, programming is not something that many people come into university knowing how to do. Um, the first year students are reluctant to sort of put their heads out there in person, let alone online when they're having trouble. So creating these exercises, these uh, gamified activities and embedding them in the bright space shell, something they were already used to, was a really good way of allowing them to practice, you know, practice their knowledge, even practice their pro programming skills to uh, some degree and repeat those tasks, repeat those exercises over and over again. Um, sometimes as instructors, we spend a lot of time, uh, we invest a lot of time in developing tools or resources. And one really lovely thing I love about um, the H5P exercises is they're easily revised, they're easily reused. Um, and you can share them with other instructors who are using Brightspace. So, you know, it's not just my little box of tools and you can't have them. It's my little box of tools in here. Um, sharing with other instructors, even this past semester, I shared with our supplemental instructor in engineering. So one of the workshop students is a supplemental instructor. So she took those exercises and used them as part of her uh, activities with the students. Um, 
one lovely thing I found with working online with the students in particular was um, being able to do WebEx, yay, WebEx, um, and being able to share screens um, and being able to say, having a virtual student hour, okay, you're having a problem with that concept. Let's go to this H5P exercise uh, embedded in our Brightspace page and work through it together, okay? It wasn't just, you know, a one-way thing, me talking them, listening. It was us kind of playing together, which really made it fun for the students. And honestly, I mean, maybe not every instructor feels this way because we all have varying levels of confidence in technology, but I love uh, finding new ways of uh, using technology to help the students. And I love putting together all these different exercises and trying to find as many different, um, many different modes you know, oh, there's a new one. There's a new type of question. I got to figure out how I can use that in my in my shell in my course. And I mean, some of them are more intuitive to make than others. But thankfully, we have the resources at CITL and within our learning technology coaches that if I'm not sure how to make this work, I can just send a quick note or call somebody, and boom, I get answers. <laughs> and I really appreciate that. And the students do as well. I think. Yeah, that's it for me. Um, so about the benefits that as learning technology coach, uh, we got from this collaboration, I categorize them uh, in two ways, uh, in two groups. The first group is the, in general, you know, the benefits that we get in general. And the second one is the benefits that I specifically I myself gained through uh, this H5P collaboration. Uh, in general, the first one is giving me a clear vision for tech transformation. It's so important that uh, districts formulate a clear plan and vision for our tech transformation. Uh, the plan has to be a student centered for sure and promote student voice throughout every thread of its framework. And um, it's equally important that uh, the technology that we choose to implement is research first by CITL. Like in this case, H5 if you had a workshop and that way we tech coaches have tools to pull from that can empower students to explore and try new things. The second benefit is prioritizing the improvement of teaching and learning, what it worked. Uh, when it comes to tech coaching, the priorities have to lie in the improvement of teaching and learning, not just the technology that we use or we introduce. When we use properly, technology can vastly enhance the learning experience. Uh, when used without teaching and learning in mind, technology that we're investigating can uh, feel like a burden for teachers and even students. Uh, we can do amazing things like with learning and technology that we couldn't do just like maybe five years ago before COVID. And this is like a great chance to have uh, this opportunity to, to investigate the, those technologies before introducing them to the profs and students. And the third uh, benefit that I can get in general is about making me more confident in my own abilities. Um, there is a sense of pride and satisfaction, and I think like uh, uh, Professor Hogan can also agree on this one, that uh, when we help someone to overcome a challenge or improve significantly, like you feel like really, really good. My personal experience echoes this sentiment. Uh, there is a tremendous wave of positive emotions that come from helping others to be more successful. Uh, this develop of positivity and pride uh, can make us feel uh, better about ourselves, and also can make us more confident to in our own abilities. And specifically about the H5P, I can mention like two points. The first point is um, improving with the feedbacks from the students. Um, in general, the skills that we gain uh, apply to the rest of our lives. Um, uh, the skills of uh, coaching others are skills us use not just at work, but in all parts of our life. Uh, like if I become a better listener, if uh, better at asking questions, more aware of how and why people change or how they think, I think I might be able to apply those to become a better person, better neighbor, better uh, spouse, better sibling, in general, a better person. And feedback is very, very important to help us to get to that point. Especially, specifically for this H5P, we had um, great feedback from the students and also working closely with the instructors uh, giving us like many feedbacks about how we can uh, modify our like tools or our uh, let's say the knowledge about that in order to ha have a better help for 
uh, both sides, students and profs. And the second part is challenges, limitation, and restrictions. Um, it may seem uh, counterintuitive, but it's completely true. Um, uh, first of all, as coaches, like we ask a lot of questions. Uh, so there is learning for us there right away. Uh, secondly, throughout these conversations, like we get access to our experiences and what is working and what's not working for us. For example, in HP, like the more we use that, we found that there are like some, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to call them problems, but some like, uh, let's say, some features that you have to be very uh, careful when you're using them. For example, if you want to give uh, uh, quizzes or tests to students, you have to make sure that, you know, this is not the safest way. Or like if you want to uh, make a recording tool, you have to make sure that you have to add a couple of lines. Uh, to give your computer permission and like those are the things that are you you don't find them un unless you really really work hard in in, in those uh, software and this way you can get to know the restrictions and you can overcome those challenges and i'm gonna hand it over to shivam uh, who's gonna talk about the Paltum. hi thank you javed uh... I'm Shivam, I'm a PhD candidate in mathematics, and I'm going to present on this tool that I was working and that I've worked with in collaboration with an instructor, which is called Powtoon. Such a cool name, right? Uh, and if you can move to the next slide. So starting with the outline of, so I'll just start with a brief overview of what this tool is. And then we'll tell you about the story of the collaboration between myself and an instructor in the Department of Education, Dr. Susan. And then I'll say a little bit about the, the benefits we got and we'll end with some of the examples that this tool can be used in the education scenario. So, so Powtoon, uh, it's basically, if you click Javid, uh, one more click, it will give you it's basically just an online platform so that that allows you to make animation videos. So you might have seen these kind of videos on YouTube or you might already been using it. Uh, can you go back, Javik, please? Uh, using it like these uh, whiteboard explainer videos that you might have seen on the YouTube or you might already be using in your in your courses. So traditionally, they're usually made uh, by a sketching artist who make all the sketches and then they're combined together. But more recently, there have been like tools like Powtoon and some similar tools that allows you to make these videos just by yourself. You, you don't get that much customization because the characters are kind of like already set, but still it gives you a lot of freedom to play with yourself, play with, with it yourself, which is a great thing that you can change uh, the things that you want for your particular purpose that you're using the video. And Powtoon is one of them. And so if you can move to the next slide. So this was one of the tools that was, uh, we got a request from one of the instructor and I was trying and exploring this tool when we got another instructor who just dropped by for some other problem. And then we just got to somehow collaborate on this tool and which is we'll see in the so i thought of like telling this story just by using the tool itself just to have a uh, free two birds with one key to just also demonstrate the tool and also tell the story of this collaboration so next is a video but just an fyi you just the volume can be high so just make sure uh, to reach your audio levels so next is a video and I'll be quiet. Here is a story of collaboration between a tech coach and an instructor using a tool called Powtoon. This is Teaching and Learning Exchange at CITL in Education 1001, where tech coaches research educational technologies and are available for instructors to drop in for questions, software demos, and collaborations. On one fine day, Shivam, a graduate tech coach at CITL was on shift and Dr. Susan dropped by with some questions on PowerPoint and YouTube videos. They had a great session working on PowerPoint and exploring various video recording tools.
This is when Shiva mentioned a new tool called Powtoon that he had been working on for a while to make animated videos. Dr. Susan had heard of that tool but didn't know that making those animated videos could be this easy. She had so many great ideas on how she could use this tool to create engaging videos for her course. Dr. Susan booked another appointment in which she explored Powtoon and made an animated video for her course. She made a video on the principles of universal design of learning for her course and received very positive feedback from her students. And this is the story of another successful collaboration between the tech coaches and instructors. With this collaboration, Dr. Susan learned a new video creation tool to enhance engagement in her course, and Shivam learned from Dr. Susan's experience regarding how to use this technology for instructional purposes. Created using Powtoon. Thank you. So, yeah, so this, this is just like a fun video I just made, like, but there's so many ways you could make like nicer videos and use it. There are many instructors that we know are using these kind of videos for kind of like household items, like uh, housekeeping items, the syllabus, and which just makes it more engaging for students to, uh, to get the information rather than just the plain text. So, just to say some of the benefits, which I will just echo one of some of the benefits that we already heard, which are kind of very similar. Like from the instructor, what we heard is that they got to know a new tool, which helped them uh, engage students more because they got a really good positive feedback the way they used it in their course. And other benefits we got to know is CCTNT, which is comfortable and confident in trying to technologies. It's not a real term, I just made that up. But really what it is, is that they really, we really get, got the feedback that they're really comfortable with the technologies. And many of the technologies that we got to learn actually came from the instructors that we were working with for some different problems. They just mentioned some of the technologies they saw in some videos or their colleagues or friends were using it. And they just mentioned it and then they asked if we would like to try that. and it just makes a whole lot of difference in the experience to have someone with you trying something new. And for example, I wouldn't have uh, got to know about this thing if it wasn't for uh, for the request from an instructor about this technology. And now I have a new skill that I can improve on and use in uh, while I have to teach, which I'm already moving into the benefits that I had, which is uh, one of that is like I have a good professional experience that I get to know what the problem is and then I go back and research what could be the possible solution and then trying to communicate back to the instructor. So this back and forth really helped me uh, improve some of the skills. And secondly is it's kind of like I got many teaching insights. So since we are graduate students, we're just not coming from purely from tech technology side. So it's kind of like shadowing uh, a, an instructor and seeing how they think about their classes and designing their courses. So while I help them through the technical sides, I also get to know how I could be able to use these uh, when I teach or when I do TA, I get a lot of insights of how to think from that perspective. Um, so if we move to the next slide, I'll, so, I'll just now show some of the examples in the how this Powtoon can be used in the education. This is just a video we made to demonstrate the tool, and it's on YouTube. It's not really viral, but uh, we'll show you. We just made some of the examples uh, how to use this tool, and if uh, we'll just play this video for you, so that you can see some of the ways that it can be used.
So this is just an example of the tool that I personally enjoyed using and learning, and hopefully you might also enjoy it and maybe use it for your instructions. And that's now I'll thank you for coming and moving on to the next presenter, Farana Akhtar, who is going to talk about Peer Scholar. Over to you, Farana. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello, all. Um, I'm Farhan Akhtar and PhD student, Department of Process Engineering. Uh, in this part, I'm going to talk about PR Scholar. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, this is the outline of my presentation. Um, uh, first, I'll give the overview of the PR Scholar and then um, talk about the case study, like uh, working with the uh, instructor. Uh, and then um, some experience uh, sharing from the instructor point of view and experience sharing from uh, tech coach's point of view and then some suggestions at the end. So next slide. Yeah, uh, the first thing, uh, this is a short overview of Peer Scholar. Uh, the first question is what is Peer Scholar? Uh, Peer Scholar is a tool, learning tool, uh, where students can see each of work and then um, also they can participate in the evaluation process, uh, evaluation of the peers work uh, through uh, giving feedback or marking. And there are several benefits um, of using Peer Scholar. Uh, uh, the most important benefit from the student's perspective is like they uh, can develop their um, evaluation skill and writing skill uh, and also from um, uh, uh, instructor's point of view, uh, uh, there is a, the first benefit is like a, re a reduction of workload. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, um, in spite of having uh, advantages, uh, that it has some challenges also. Like um, students can see each others uh, uh, like work and they are participating in the uh, evaluation process. So. Um, and they are not uh, like expert in evaluate ev evaluation. So uh, that's in that case, like students might feel uncomfortable regarding negative feedback, or they are not sure about the marking. And also, it takes um, it might take a lot of time. So it, these are the challenges students might feel. Uh, from the instructor's point of view, they have <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they might have concern regarding the quality of the feedback as students are giving the feedback. And um, regarding the um, negative comment, uh, uh, teacher uh, instructor might have uh, issues like um, uh, dysfunctional group behavior and also the time commitment. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is the case study uh, like um, I want to share. Uh, uh, the professor, Dr. David Clayton from the Department of Biology, uh, he taught a course uh, that is the Biology 4605 in the beginning of the uh, semester, uh, in the fall uh, 2021 semester. And in the beginning of the semester, uh, he was informed that uh, no TA will be assigned for this course. Uh, so considering the workload, so he uh, he was looking for uh, a tool uh, so that uh, he can use it uh, for his course, uh, for, the, for, the, for that course. Uh, uh, in this context, the CITL, uh, uh, like uh, CITL suggested to use the peer scholar tool and uh, professor agreed to use that one. And uh, CITL had assigned me to provide support uh, uh, regarding the use of peer scholar. And uh, initially, a uh, professor wanted to have a trial assessment, a trial assessment session with the students, live session during the class time. That's why he uh, wanted me uh, to be present in his class. So I just uh, went to uh, went two days. Uh, I, I, I was there uh, in two days, like one Monday and Friday uh, and um, at, uh, and provide some, uh, provided some, some support and uh, gained some experience that, that I'm going to share in my next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, um, well, while I was uh, in the class, uh, some impromptu problems came up and I just gave some, some sort of, uh, solutions corresponding that problems. The problems are like um, uh, students are not familiar with the peer scholar. Uh, so um, uh, most of the stu uh, students submitted their work. Uh, uh, some of the students submitted their work in the bright space, not in the peer scholar. 
and some students uh, with, uh, they didn't submit any of the work in Brightspace or Peer Scholar since the deadline was expired. So uh, professor wanted to have uh, the access to these students so that they can submit their work in the Peer School separately. Uh, so uh, and another another point was like. Initially, professor was thinking about uh, marks distribution, like 50% for the submission of the work and 50% for the assessment. And then later he found that um, since he didn't make it compulsory for all the students, so that's why he wanted to give 100% marks who just submitted their work, uh, but didn't participate in the assessment. So I provided uh, this kind of like technical support regarding the, this question, uh, regarding this impromptu problems. Um, so I'm not going to all these details because these are the problem that came up and I gave the solutions. Next slide, please. Yeah, so um, when the first trial and assessment session uh, was over, then uh, there are some observations that Professor um, uh, David made. Uh, he, he pointed out that uh, to record the score of the student, it required a lot of time. And um, uh, since the students are not expert in uh, uh, in assessing, so one uh, one point he noticed during the assessment uh, that um, if some students made one mistake in part A, and uh, using the result of the part A, he that the student continued to part B, but because of the uh, error in the part A, he got the uh, wrong result. But the student who assessed the, his work. Uh, th uh, that student uh, detected marks in both part A and B. So um, that it should not be. So uh, that point he found that it's not, it, does, it didn't give the fair judgment. And also um, in, in his in the assignment or the classwork, there are some questions regarding uh, the, uh, that, that falls in the critical thinking uh, part. And uh, that's why professor wanted to have a live session uh, during the assessment. So uh, uh, some students didn't understand, like uh, for uh, uh, I don't understand what are the answer written uh, for the particular question. So uh, that student asked professor, what, what is it right or wrong? So then at that time, professor wanted to uh, wanted that student to read it loud. What is the what was the answer written in the assignment? Um, but the student who wrote that answer, uh, he didn't feel good, uh, though everything was anonymous. So uh, that's uncomfortable um, feelings uh, he also observed. Uh, and um, the another, another observation he made that is like uh, not all like not all students uh, were present in the class. Uh, so all students were not uh, participating uh, in the assessment, and uh, all students didn't submit their work in peer scholar. And he couldn't find out why it happened. But he, he, this is just, uh, just his observation from the uh, like trial assessment, and and from all this observation, he made um, he made some remarks. The first remark is that um, this uh, this peer scholar tool is a great tool for the uh, fixed answer questions, and also um, if the question requires the critical thinking, and uh, he find it it's limited um, value. So next slide, please. Yeah, uh, this is the experience that I got as a tech coach uh, while I uh, was working with Professor Dr. David. Um, the first thing is that it's, it's really true. Students are not expert in assessment. So um, um, from my understanding uh, or from my uh, knowledge, I, I, I would recommend like uh, uh, this is my kind of like a suggestion that if there if before before the start, like in the beginning of the semester, uh, if there is a, uh, if it's possible to have a demo class uh, uh, regarding the use of peer scholar and the assessment, so in that case, uh, professor can have uh, 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 professor can transmit his idea or uh, his uh, expectations uh, through uh, through this class, and students will also learn about like how to evaluate and how to evaluate and how to. Um, put comments um, nicely uh, so that uh, it can be effective. This is the one part that I uh, I think it's, re uh, it's required. Another point is that uh, Professor uh, Dr. David, he didn't uh, make it compulsory for all the students. Compulsory in a sense that uh, um, if you participate, then you'll get extra marks. If you do not participate, it's okay. That, that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of um, uh, like, uh, uh, that kind of thinking initially it was, 
but if you if uh, from my from my understanding if we if we want to make it uh, make the peer scholar more effective so if it is possible to make it compulsory so that all students will participate and uh, uh, it will be more effective um, and also uh, uh, professor uh, one uh, in the first trial assessment he uh, he used the previous um, uh, uh, as assignment that is or, uh, designed in the like uh, before uh, before using the peer scholar so i find it um, uh, I, I find that this kind of like since it is it is not like peer scholar friendly so uh, if uh, considering the use of peer scholar if the questions are modified or question and redesigned or maybe make a new question uh, so that uh, so that uh, it will be effective in that sense like using the peer scholar uh, uh, in that case, like uh, the questions like objective uh, or fixed answer questions, or maybe subjective or critical, all kind of question uh, uh, instructor can accommodate in that uh, assignment. And um, the finally, uh, what I uh, another another concern that um, uh, instructor might have in terms of um, marks distribution, uh, maybe he find that the quality of the feedback in in that case. Peer scholar has a uh, has a one of the option that instructor can see the overall mark distribution, and from the distribution he can find the inconsistency and can go to the can go and check uh, and find out the if there's an inconsistency in terms of uh, evaluation. So this is another option uh, instructor can have it. Um, Throughout the whole experience, um, uh, though there are some limitations in. Uh, uh, considering the use of uh, the peer scholar but uh, the experience that i gained for, as a tech coach uh, it's really helpful in in a sense that now we more we are no we are more uh, confident about the use of peer scholar like what for what courses it will be most um, what courses it will be a best fit for it and how can we make um, the efficient use of the peer scholar for that course so this is the like most uh, beneficial point that i have learned from uh, through the whole uh, work uh, from the whole working process. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, I think is, is almost done. Yeah, thank you. And okay, I think that was the last slide for our presentation, and I guess like we are a little bit over the time. So if you have any questions, like uh, we can get your questions in the chat, and it was our pleasure to have these mini conversations for you. I mean, a big conversation full of mini conversations. Hi, I uh, we just have a few minutes uh, till uh, quarter after twelve, but I do have a, co a comment more than a question. Uh, I work with um, Student Life, and we have developed the online orientation called Mun One Hundred and One, and so we did as well use Powtoon and and Doodly and H Five P and Articulate. Uh, we haven't looked at Peer Scholar, but I will be definitely looking at that as well. And I just wanted to say that it's it is a really um, creative, innovative, and um, engaging way to connect with people and just get that excellent content uh, in front of the students. So I, I really enjoyed your presentation immensely and really uh, happy to see that it was used uh, again, you know, with other um, faculties and, and units as well. So we, we had great success with, with those uh, applications as well. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Well, there is a question here about uh, how do I act as a coach? And I think Marina can answer that question. Uh, we have a page uh, on CIDL website. I just um, posted a link to it in the chat, or you can email me. My email is there in the chat as well, and I will connect you with a coach. Even if you uh, don't have any like particular instructional problem in mind right now, but just want to have a coach, you know, chat with you, and maybe they will give you suggestions regarding what you could use in your course. Uh, you can do so. You don't need to wait till you know a problem with grading or uh, course design arises. Just connect with us, and we'll be happy to assist with whatever you need. And also, they have a physical, uh, <laughs> well, the education room one or one thousand one. Like you can drop in like anytime, like Monday to Friday, 
I think 9 to 4.30 p.m. And uh, you can get connected to whoever is working at that time. And I think your presentation as well gave us a little insight on the things that we can use or the ways we can communicate with students. So somebody said earlier that um, Powtoon might be a really cool way to uh, explore syllabus and that kind of presentation. And I thought, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that actually would be really creative and much more engaging than the, the page that we're used to sort of plopping down in front of them. So I, I really appreciate your presentation uh, very much. And it's really exciting to see cool, this kind of cool work being done. Thank you. And uh, I just want to add to the comments. Uh, there were only five presentations, so we could squeeze in only a tiny little portion of uh, what we have been doing and what we can do and what we can explore for instructors when they come for help. So we can do much more than just how to Basically, do what works, right space. That's very Sorry, exciting. Good yeah, basically, what we showed today was just the iceberg, <laughs> and like, <laughs> are much more under the ocean. 